Exciting news, SpaceX is edging closer to becoming a comprehensive aerospace contractor. Renowned for its vertical integration, SpaceX had been subcontracting parachute production until recently when it discreetly purchased Pioneer Aerospace following its parent company's insolvency. In an uncommon maneuver, SpaceX bought out one of its vendors for $2.2 million subsequent to the parachute manufacturer's Chapter 11 filing earlier this month. Aviation Safety Resources, or ASR for short, Pioneer's parent firm sought Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in Florida's Middle District on November 1st. ASR took over Pioneer Aerospace from Safran Electronics and Defense in June of 2022. Pioneer, headquartered in Connecticut, has been designing parachutes for space and various applications for decades. Its portfolio includes parafoils designed in the 1960s for potential Gemini spacecraft use, parachutes employed in Mars lander missions, and the OSIRIS-REx sample return capsule. Additionally, it supplied drogue chutes for SpaceX's Crew Dragon and its cargo variant. On November 9th, Pioneer Aerospace submitted an asset purchase agreement to the bankruptcy court, outlining SpaceX acquisition of most Pioneer assets for $2.2 million. This encompassed intellectual property related to drag shoots and drogue shoots, notably the SPX 00000432 drogue shoot. The sale received approval from the bankruptcy court on November 22nd. SpaceX's swiftness stems from its persistent drive to handle in-house production since its inception. This practice reduces reliance on external suppliers. When subcontractors contractors are involved, it signifies the component's exceptional significance, and SpaceX has yet to develop an in-house alternative that surpasses it. Crafting parachutes capable of enduring such extreme velocities poses the true challenge. Both SpaceX and Boeing, the other company with a NASA commercial crew contract, encounter challenges in developing parachutes for their spacecraft, facing test setbacks along the way. Even after deployment, there were instances of lagging parachutes that opened later than anticipated without posing a safety risk. Parachutes turned out to be way more challenging than we anticipated, remarked Phil McAllister, director of NASA's Commercial Space Flight Division, during a presentation on lessons learned from the commercial crew program. We thought, we've mastered parachutes during Apollo, how difficult could it be? It could be immensely difficult. Space is inherently tough, but the creation of space parachutes is significantly tougher, echoed Abhi Tripathi, director of mission operations at UC Berkeley's Space Sciences Laboratory, in an interview. It's among the most daunting tasks, akin to developing an exceedingly complex propulsion system. Tripathi, with experience at SpaceX as Director of Dragon Missions and In-Flight Reliability, and nearly a decade at NASA as a lead aerospace systems engineer, spoke about SpaceX's practices. He offered insights into CEO Elon Musk's decisions on outsourcing, noting Musk's evaluation criteria, which involve supplier competence and adherence to delivery schedules. According to the information, Tripathi explained that if either criterion falls short, SpaceX considers internal production and integration of the component into its product line. The intricate nature of manufacturing technically advanced low-volume products presents challenges for rapid replication, especially within the tight timeframes required for SpaceX Dragon's certification. Although SpaceX actively participated in engineering the drogue chutes and conducted extensive in-house testing, manufacturing complexities led to external collaborations with Pioneer and Airborne. Tripathi emphasized that parachute creation leans more towards art than pure science, underlining the criticality of exhaustive testing and a dedicated test program. A meticulous approach becomes pivotal in comprehending weaknesses within the system. SpaceX, initially established by Musk in 2002 for rocket development and launches, swiftly expanded into Low Earth Orbit, or LEO, resupply missions with NASA. Now it offers commercial crewed space flights, satellite internet, and satellite manufacturing. SpaceX's most recent acquisition, Swarm, in 2021, facilitated Starlink's provision of cell service with T-Mobile. Presently, SpaceX has an opportunity to diversify into parachute systems, yet it might choose to integrate this capability into Dragon operations solely for internal use. This marks a monumental stride forward for SpaceX. In an intriguing update from the realm of space exploration, Firefly Aerospace has recently executed the inaugural hot fire test for its 
cutting-edge Miranda rocket engine, unleashing a colossal surge of vibrant green flames. On November 28th, the company declared the completion of the Miranda engine test at its Texas-based testing facility. A spokesperson confirmed that the test, operating at 65% power, aimed to verify the engine's startup sequence. In the forthcoming months, the company plans to conduct an extensive duration test, running the engine for 206 seconds. The Miranda engine utilizes liquid oxygen and kerosene propellants, generating an impressive 230,000 pound force of thrust. The Antares 330, a novel iteration of Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket, will be powered by seven Miranda engines in its first stage. This rocket, developed through a partnership announced in August of 2022, will replace the previous Ukrainian-built first stage utilizing Russian engines. Anticipated for its inaugural flight around mid-2025, the Antares 330 will utilize this new configuration. Similarly, the medium launch vehicle, or MLV, will employ a first stage outfitted with seven Miranda engines, complemented by a vacuum-optimized Miranda engine in its new second stage. With plans for a debut launch by late 2025, this vehicle will be capable of delivering up to 16,000 kilograms into low Earth orbit, a notable increase from the Antares 330's 10,000 kilograms. Scott Lair, Vice President and General Manager of Launch and Missile Defense Systems at Northrop Grumman, highlighted the significance of this advancement. He stated upgrading the first stage of Antares concurrently with developing the medium launch vehicle allows our collaboration to expedite the launch of a new vehicle to the market while minimizing design risks. Bill Weber, CEO of Firefly, emphasized the rapid development of Miranda in just over a year. He added, building upon Firefly's swiftly created Reaver and Lightning engine, Miranda stands as the most expeditiously crafted and tested propulsion system to date, in reference to engines developed by the Alpha launch vehicle. In the whirlwind progress of commercial space companies, NASA sounds the alarm over impending, very problematic budget reductions in space technology. Speaking at a November 30th meeting of the NASA Advisory Council, Prasoon Desai, acting associate administrator for space technology at the agency, mentioned that both House and Senate spending bills for fiscal year of 2024 falls short of the administration's request of $1.392 billion for space technology. The House version would provide the Space Technology Mission Directorate, or STMD, with $1.205 billion. That would be essentially the same as what space technology received in 2023, excluding inflation adjustments. The Senate bill, though, offers $1.118 billion, a 7% reduction from 2023. The Senate proposal is very problematic if it comes to fruition, he warned. That impact would be distributed unevenly across the directorate's portfolio. Both the House and Senate bills fully fund the largest single project in STMD, the OSAM-1 satellite servicing demonstration mission, at $227 million. NASA's small business programs located in STMD would also be fully funded at about $300 million. Both the House and Senate bills sharply increased proposed funding for nuclear thermal propulsion. The agency requested $17.5 million for that work in its proposal, but the House and Senate bills instead provide $110 million. Other programs, though, could suffer sharp funding cuts. Desai's presentation stated that STMD programs not mentioned in either the House or Senate bills could face a 22% cut if the directorate receives the overall funding in the House bill and a 27% cut if it gets the Senate funding. Some programs with directed funding in either bill also face reductions. NASA is operating under a continuing resolution that funds the agency at 2023 levels through February 2nd. He said STMD is taking a conservative approach with how it is spending that funding now to protect against any cuts below 2023 levels in the final 2024 spending bill. If a number significantly below $1.2 billion arises, it's going to be difficult, but it'll be less difficult because we're being a little conservative, he said. Other parts of the agency are taking similar approaches. NASA announced earlier this month it was ramping down work on the Mars Sample Return Program under the CR because of the large gap between funding offered in the House and Senate bills for 2024. Budget uncertainty also prompted NASA to delay formal confirmation of the Dragonfly mission to Titan this month. We're waiting to see what happens, he said. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode.
episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up today and become a patron to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.